If y'all will, turn with me tonight for, to Philippians chapter 3. It'll be just a, a little bit. Feels good to be in the house of God tonight. Amen. At first it started out, I didn't know what was going to happen. And by the time we got to singing and going on, Brother Bobby, I just felt such a sweet spirit. I feel God and I feel I feel wonderful. I love it to be I love being in the house of God. Right. I love getting every chance to go, Brother Jimmy. I don't know what I would do if I couldn't come to the house of God one more time. Amen. I don't know what I would be able to do, Brother Bobby, if I couldn't call upon the name of the Lord tonight. I don't know what would happen, Brother Michael, if I was taken out. If they told me that I couldn't worship God anymore, if I couldn't lift his name on high, I don't know what I would do. Would I sit back and do what they told me or would I just be put to death or whatever they, the consequences would be for worshiping me? I don't know. I think I would have to go put, lay my life on the line for Him because after all, He did the same for me. Amen. If you got it tonight, everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good enough for me. We'll start in verse 1. It says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice. Everybody say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. rejoice in the Lord. To write, these, to write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of, of the concision. For we are a circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. Brother Tom, would you pray? Great God, as we come to you, Lord, uh, one more time, God. Uh, Lord, at this important time in the service, Lord, as Your Word's been read, God, as it's about to be preached tonight, Lord, I pray that You'd anoint Brother Josh. God, give him the words, God, that You would have him to speak. Fill his mouth tonight, God. Uh, Lord, I pray that anointing God would be upon him tonight. God, I pray You'd anoint us as well. God, that we would hear and receive Thy Word tonight. And God, we give You all the thanks and the praise in Your lovely name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank You, God. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. If You will allow me the time, I've thought over and over and over, Brother Bobby, about what to title this and what to, what to call it, but I still haven't come up with anything. So... If you think of something, you let me know and I'll write it down for the next time I'll preach it, alright? But I'm going to go back and I'm going to read through these Scriptures carefully one more time. Verse 1 says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. I got to look into these Scriptures, Brother Bobby, and that, that, that word rejoice pops out to me. And I begin to think, what does rejoice mean to Brother Josh? I sat at the kitchen table the other night and while, while Sister Micah and the girls were eating supper, she said, Honey, are you going to eat? And I said, No, I've got to write this down. I don't know what it is, but I've got to write it down. She said, All right, go ahead. And about 30 minutes past, she said, Honey, are you going to eat now? I said, No, I, I, I still got to keep going. Got to keep going. Got to keep going. And I kept running through my mind. What does rejoice mean to Brother Josh? And to me, when I think about rejoice, I'm thinking about getting excited for Jesus. Getting on fire for God. As the world would call it, partying down, throwing up the, the, the house, letting the roof catch on fire, whatever you want to call it. But to me, rejoice is get excited for Jesus. Go out and spread the word of God. Jesus is alive and well. Amen. Yeah. Rejoice. Church, rejoice tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. The Apostle Paul said, Indeed, it's not grievous for him to write this to us, but for it is safe. Safe for us to write this for us. Now, why is it safe? I begin to read it. says, Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Church of here take not beware of evil dogs. Right. Beware of an enemy. He's out there lurking. Right. Back and forth. He's looking, Brother Tony, to seeking who he can destroy, who he can kill physically and spiritually. Right. Church, tonight the enemy sitting somewhere outside this house, probably somewhere on a pew in here looking at somebody's soul, thinking, how can I tear them down one yeah. more time? Wow. How can yeah. I make that wall crumble? How can I make that temple fall to the ground? I'm telling you yeah. tonight that if you'll deliver, uh, to depend on God, if you'll give it to Him, He'll help you through. Beware of the dogs. Beware of the evil workers tonight, church. Yeah. Uh, Beware right. of the, the, the 
quick decision. All right. This Bible I have looked down and looked at the word decision. And it says the mutilators of the flesh. People of the flesh, Brother Jimmy. People that are out there working in the flesh. Amen. That are promoting tattoos. Promoting piercings. All right. Promoting alcohol. Come on now. Promoting drugs. Yes, sir. Promoting fornication. Yeah. Promoting cussing. Promoting disobeying mama and daddy. Promoting rebellion. Beware of those things. Oh, hallelujah, church. Come on. That's Lord. good. Hallelujah, man. I'm going to get down tonight. Yes, Lord. I feel That's like getting down in God. Hallelujah. If you allow me the time, I'll eventually get to my message. Hallelujah. Finally, in verse 3, it says, For we are circumcision. Which worship God in spirit. Amen. We'll, we'll take this one a little bit at a time. Hallelujah. Goes down and said, We worship God in spirit and in truth. We lift him up tonight. Yes, amen. If I could talk to y'all for a minute, I want to talk to somebody about worship. Hallelujah. Brother Tony gave me the book I read, and it's been hitting me ever since. It hit me before that. Before I read the book, I was at work days in and days out, Brother Bobby, and I, I began to open myself up to God a little more. I listened to all these people playing their rap and their rock and country and rock and roll and ungodly mess, this and that, whatever they want to call it on the radios. They turned it all the way up and I decided, well, it's my turn. I got my own area. I can turn it up as loud as I want. So I turned on some little Indiana Bible College, turned up a little bit of worship, turned up a little bit of preaching. Hey Amen. Listen to some Holy Ghost radio. Let some one God apostolic tongue talk and preaching go forth, Brother Bobby. And I had a few people tell me I was crazy. I had a few people stay away from me. A few people wanted to know what would I believe it in. But let me tell you, I decided one day that I'm going to worship God in spirit and in truth. I'm going to worship Him in the house. And I'm going to worship Him outside. And let me tell you, it's opening the door up for me tonight, brother. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'll show you. I got Thank you, three Jesus. pages of notes. The, the third page is front and back. I don't know how well I'm going to follow these notes, but I will get the point across to you tonight that worship is very important tonight, Brother Bobby. Yes. We worship God in spirit, and we're rejoicing in Jesus Christ. I asked Sister Mike, I said, why do you rejoice in Jesus Christ? She said, I don't know, honey. Why do you? I said, just let me tell you what he's done for me. Brother Bobby, let me tell you where he's brought me from. He brought me from the back pew when I was a sinner. I sang that song, Walk the Line. No, very, very few of you realize that that's a song about the day that I got up. I went to church with my mama and my daddy. I tried living for God before and it just wasn't working out for me. Daddy wasn't living for God. Mama was doing the best she could with me and the kid girls. And she, I asked Daddy one night after church was over, Daddy, off the car, I said, Daddy, will you go with me to the front? Something's drawing me, and I can see it all over his face, Brother Tony. Tears rolling down his face. He said, No, son, I don't believe I will. I said for a minute, I thought, Well, if he ain't going to go, I ain't going to go. Then I said, Daddy, you ain't going to go. That's your choice. You're making your bed where you lie, but I've got to make my way down there. I've got to go get a hold of Jesus. I've got to get a hold of salvation tonight, church. This was too up one All night. I was, I'll tell you what I was wearing. I was wearing a green or yellow t-shirt, blue jean shirt, and uh, jeans. I was wearing some black tennis shoes. I had a necklace on. My hair spiked up. I didn't even look a bit like a Christian. But I said, I'm going to go, Daddy. I've got to go. So I made my way down the road, Brother Bobby. I walked that line. Some people call it the lonely line. I call it the happy line because that's the line that took me from the world of sin, the world of, of uh, agony, the world of ignition, whatever the case is. It took me from that lost and lonely world and brought me to the answer, Brother Bobby. It brought me to the light. It brought me All to right. salvation. It brought me to heaven. It brought me to Jesus Christ. I walked that line one day and I gave my heart to him. And in the second verse it says, and tears of joy begin to flow. Brother Bobby, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was feeling. I don't know what, said, what kind of tears of joy. The tears that were telling me, hey, you're leaving the world. You're leaving the fornication, Brother Bobby. The pornography don't have control over you no more. The alcohol can't control you no more. The drugs, the cursing, the ungodliness, it can't control you no more. All These right. tears are giving you some something. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. It's good. Good preacher. Here in a minute, I'm going to get to it. Y'all just hang with me. Yeah, we do. Hallelujah. we'll be with you. The tears begin to flow, Brother Bobby. 
All right. And I questioned it first. I said, God, I don't know what's going to happen. I can't do this. People are going to laugh at me. They're going to think I'm, I'm, I'm crazy. They're going to call me a fool. I don't know what I'm going to do. What do I, why, what, what? Just get running through my mind. And I remember somebody saying, just let go. Just let him do it. Just let him have control. I'm losing power. Go ahead and preach. We'll change He said, uh, they told me, they said, just go ahead and let God have control. So I told myself, I said, okay. I said, self? Self said, huh? I said, let God have control. Go ahead and open your heart and let Him control it. Thank you, brother. And I said, all right, God, here we go. I'm done. I'm tired of fighting. It's yours. You take my soul. So we did, brother Bobby. And a few minutes later, I was waking up. <laughs> I don't know what had happened. I was, I was from, I started in the middle of the aisle, front and played the fuse. I was somewhere over here. And I got back into going again. And next thing I know, I'm over here, Brother Bobby. I done made my way from over here halfway down the aisle. I was all the way in the back of the church. I was underneath some lights. I was hitting lights. I went for praying for myself. Somebody says, hey, let's pray for her. And so I ran over and laid my hands on her. I don't even remember what I prayed for, Brother Bobby. But I was so engulfed in the name of Jesus, in the Holy Ghost, that I couldn't control it. I loved it. It was amazing. It was better than any drug I'd ever been on. I was higher than any other kind of high. I was bigger than any kind of pill. I went from doing Xanax to being addicted to the gospel. I went from drinking old kind of alcohol to the new kind of wine. Amen. I went from the world to Jesus. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got something to rejoice in Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. We do. Yeah. Hallelujah. God, forgive me. I may get a little beside myself tonight. But oh. It's all right. Go my ahead. Jesus has done something for me, yeah. Brother Bobby. He saved my life when I could have died. I had a wreck and I could have died. My girls could have died and He kept His hands over me. Yes. Brother Bobby, I hurt myself at work all the time. Things fall on top of me. I can die. I can get hurt. But let me tell you, Jesus is still holding on to me. Brother Bobby, I'm having an issue making the meals meet week to week. But it's still happening. I've got something to hold on to. My God is still healing the sick. I've got something to hold on to. Right. He's making a way for me one more day. I've got something to rejoice about. That's Somebody right. in the house tonight, get in with me and worship with me. Come get on. in and rejoice with me. God has saved you tonight. He's made a way for you. He's brought you from the world. You're not out there. You're in here. I don't know why you're in here. It may be by coincidence. It may be just, well, Brother Austin, you came with Brother Dylan today. Thank God for that. Somebody may here may be here because you may have a job. Well, thank God for your job. You're here tonight. You get one more chance to grab a hold of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Bobby, we were made for worship. Yes, we were. We were made to worship Him. God created us for worship. That's right. He sure did. I don't know if I may be reading the wrong Bible. If I have somebody tell me, but I believe God created me to worship Him. Oh, right. Amen. Somebody likes to throw Adam and Eve up in my face every now and then. Say, look, you got to understand what they did is something that God wasn't intended on happening. He intended on us to worship Him. So well, why this? I said, look, you don't need to know that. We wasn't intended to know things, brother Tony. I wasn't intended to be a scientist. I'm not going to be either. I'm just a little old red, well, big old red, I can say little. <laughs> but I wasn't intended to be that. I was intended to worship God. I was intended to go out and shine my light. I taught this morning Sunday school about a lighthouse, how Jesus was the light when He came through the earth, how He was born of, of Mary. And he was, he, by the time He was 12, He was in the temple teaching and preaching. He was born to be a light. He walked his earth. He was a lighthouse. He came and he taught and we had to follow him. Yes. Brother well, Tony, if I said anything out of line. Oh, go okay, ahead. Okay, thank you. If I have, let me know. No, you're doing all right. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Brother Bobby, I'm trying my hardest not to ramble. Sister Mike told me, said, honey, you're a good preacher, but you ramble a lot, so I'm trying my hardest not to. <laughs> but we were made to worship. We were made to exalt him and lift him up. He's carried us through times which 
Brother Bob, we probably couldn't have made it on our own. That's right. I was talking to somebody this morning. I said I tried at first, listening to my mama and my daddy and my sisters, but telling them, well, this is what you need to watch out about in church. And I began to remember, not a one of them are living right for God. They're not even in the church. They're not even reading right. How can I understand somebody that's not doing right? How can I listen to them? Let me tell you, if you follow the footsteps of the world, you're going to wind up like the world. That's you right. know what are you saying? Where's the world going? Let me tell you. I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't mean to sound out of order. But the world's going straight forward to hell. That's where they're going. That's where they made their mark. They made their bed. Let me tell you, church, hell wasn't intended for us to go. Right. But we're going if we make our bed there. Well, how do we change that? Well, we got to take what's in here out of here, Come out on. there. Well, what do you mean? Well, me and Brother Tony got to talking. Me and Brother Manuel got to talking. We're going to do a little walking one day. Well, what are you talking about? There's some apartments right over here full of young people that need to get a hold of God. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to go walk. <laughs> We're going to go knock. <laughs> We're going to say, hi, I'm so-and-so from somewhere. This is what's happening. I love you. God loves you. If you ever need anything, we're here for you. If you need the answer, this is where you need to come. To Abundant Life Tabernacle, right down Highway 63B. Yeah, right down by Jim Cole. You're going to find the answer, Brother Bobby. Yes. All right. All right. Come on. That's right. Yeah. There's a world that's dying tonight because somebody's not taking the word out to them. There was a part in our lesson book this morning. This old uh, fella wrote a message to somebody. He said, I feel bad. I'm the only Christian at school. I'm, everybody looks at me like I'm a fool, like I'm crazy. What do I do? He told him, I said, well, you may not be the only Christian at school. You may be the only one that's brave enough to step out and shine your light. Amen. Hey, man, if we could just step out and shine our light tonight, then something good will happen, Brother Bobby. Right. Something amazing will happen. Yeah. Somebody's going to get saved. Somebody's going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. All hey, right. I'm not talking to no blubbers here. I'm talking the Word of God. I'm talking the truth. So somebody get with me tonight. Somebody help me out tonight. All right. All right. The more y'all worship, the more, the more y'all back me up, the faster I get done. The faster y'all can get the cracker barrel, you can go home. The faster I get these young men home, the faster we get to bed, the sooner we can get to work tomorrow. Yippee, everybody loves work, amen. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. Praise God. We rejoice in Jesus. Yeah. Because he took us through the battle, Brother Bobby. He held out a hand. What kind of hand? A hand so glorious, Brother Tony, that we wasn't fit to touch. All right. Well, what do you mean? He was just a man. He was God manifested in flesh. Yes, he was. <laughs> them same hands, Brother Jimmy, them glorious hands, them holy hands, Amen. stretched out from right. side to side upon a tree, upon an old rugged cross. Right. And they drove nails through for you and me so that we could live, so that we could be free. Right. I feel like when he was going up on the cross, he looked down and Mary was at his feet and he said, Mama, don't cry. Mama, don't shed one more tear because there's nothing painful here. It may look painful, but let me tell you what's happening. I'm doing this so that you can be free. So that one day you can come to an old fashioned altar. Right. One day you can pour out your heart, God. God. Hallelujah. God. One day that you can say, God, I'm sorry for sinning. God, I'm sorry for living an ungodly life. And you can be filled with the Holy Ghost. So that one day when you pass on, you won't die. You'll just move, move on over to the other side. Amen. You'll move on over to glory. Well, what's in glory? I'm in glory. Hallelujah. Mama, don't cry. You'll meet me one more day. Just keep on going. Amen. Church, I'm telling you, just keep on going. When you yeah. think something's wrong's happening, just keep on going. All God right. died so that he could deliver you. He died for a good cause. Not a bad cause. Trust me. When I, when I hear stories, when I hear songs, there's a song that says, Yank your holds. Every time I hear it, it just yanks my heart in two. I start bawling my eyes. Oh, hallelujah. Psalms 47. And one that says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Now, this isn't a question. I believe he's telling you to do something here. He's not ordering you to do something because he wants you to do it. But 
This is because this is what God wants. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord most high is terrible. Terrible means awesome. The Lord on high is most terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue. Y'all listen to me. He shall subdue the people under us. Anybody, Brother Bobby, anybody under you, anybody that's trying to come against you, trying to tear you down, trying to break down your wall, trying to tear up your foundation, anybody, he will subdue. Hallelujah. And the nations under our feet, he shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. You know what it shows? Brother Tony, he chose for us to be in heaven with him one day. That's right. That's he right. chose for us to walk this life loving him, lifting our name, lifting his name up, worshiping him, magnifying his name, spreading the word, making it to heaven, and just worshiping him for eternity. Uh huh. Does anybody want to go to heaven tonight? Yes, yes sir. Does anybody want to spend eternity with Jesus? Yes. yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. The devil likes to hunt. Brother Tony, you like to hunt. I like to hunt. Brother Jimmy, you like hunting? Amen. We like to hunt. When you're hunting, you're sitting and you're looking. What fence? Deer hunting is the best thing to do, but you're sitting and the deer standing. Somebody asked one time, how do you hunt? Doesn't it get boring just sitting in the middle of the woods all day? I used to tell them, yeah, because I've never been. But when I went, I told them no. They said, what are you talking about? I said, have you ever had an adrenaline rush? Brother Bobby, you're sitting in the middle of the woods, there's nothing going on. Beautiful day, and you're waiting to hear deer. Now, these deer are very quiet, so you've got to listen very good. You may hear a leaf blowing in the wind, and you think it's a deer trot, and you're looking around. <laughs> Where goes the squirrel? There's a deer right there. It's a drilling rush. It gets excited. By the time you kill that deer, it went from 5 30 to 11 30. You didn't even know it. All I right. said that to say this, the devil's hunting us tonight. He's out there searching for somebody to tear down. And church, I'm going to tell you, the best way to come over that is by worship. Amen? Right. When you call upon God, when you lift His name, no matter whether you're in the time of tribulation or you're high on the mountain, when you lift God's name high, He's going to come down. Amen? He's going to send down His Holy Ghost. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, let her all the mind and one mind and one accord. Amen? They've been praying for days on out, I believe. They've yep. been praying and seeking and praying and seeking Hallelujah. and worshiping. And they've been worshiping and they say, God, we know you promised it, Jesus. We know you promised it, so we're going to thank you for it. Amen. And let me tell you what happened. It said that it came down, Brother Bobby. Like the sound of a rushing mighty wind, church. He'll send down his Holy Ghost to you. Amen. Amen. If you don't have what you need tonight, just worship him. He'll send it on down. He'll send down the fire. He'll send down a flame. He'll send down a rain. The Holy Ghost, the healing, the deliverance, whatever you need tonight, he'll send it. Yeah. Right, that's right, that's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, if you don't believe me, let, let me just tell you this. Brother Tony taught one Sunday morning, I believe. Either he taught or he just talked to me about it. But he was talking about Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Well, I believe it was you. It may not have been you. I'm not sure anyway. They told him, you know, talking about the order, repent for your sin, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. And it says that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right. Brother Bobby, you said you prayed for nine months. Did you worship him? Yes. You thanked him for it in advance. Yes. That's what you got to do tonight. You have to thank Him in advance to get it. And oh, it's true, it's real. You've got to go ahead and worship Him for it. You've got to thank Him for yes. it. But I haven't got it yet. But you will when you believe. See, this whole thing works in one, one big circle. Faith, belief, worship, it all comes around. It runs together. You can't do it all without having one. Am I correct? All right. All right, come on. Amen. I worked with an atheist and he asked me, How do you worship something you don't know is there? I said, You got to have faith. Yes. When you have faith that something's there, you begin to believe. When you believe, you believe what they say about him. Then you begin to love. Amen. And when you love, you just worship God. Right. Then what do you worship? Well, it goes back to faith. 
Worship is the key to a lot of things tonight. The devil's throwing a lot of stuff at us, Brother Bobby. He's throwing. Well, that I see in my, my generation, he throws a lot of depression at us. My sister was diagnosed with some kind of depression one time. She had suicidal thoughts and killed herself. And she went to see a counselor at school one day. My mom met up with them. And the counselor said, I'll prescribe you some medicine. So they got the medicine and my mom read it and didn't quite understand. So she called the doctor and said, what is this? She said, well, this medicine's going to do one or two things, Brother Bobby. It's going to help her completely to where she it takes care of what little bit of uh, suicidal thoughts she has and she's going to go through with it. Well, Mama didn't like the sound of it, neither did I. Mama said, Bubba, let's hide it from Sissy. I said, all right, I'm good with that. So we switched pills. We gave her some of her allergy pills. We put them in her medicine box. That way she's <laughs> taking it right. But she's taking her allergy, so she ain't going to get sick. Lord, forgive me for lying. <laughs> Mama was gone. I took them pills that the doctor prescribed her, and I pushed them down to her. All right. I don't even even have them in the house. See, <laughs> the best way to come over things like this, Brother Bobby, is prayer. Is believing, right. receiving, worshiping God. This uh, we we've got to get back to worship, church. That's what we're we're lacking. Maybe not as a church. Maybe not individually here, but the Christian, the Apostolic Church, Pentecostals in a general. I've seen it. I've, I've visited. I've went around. I've noticed that one thing that ninety percent of them lack is worship. You hear a lot of people say, well, brother, I want to get back to what was what was happening back in the day of old. Back when grandma and grandpa was in church and the Holy Ghost was falling before it even started. They come in for prayer meeting and everybody started praying. And then they're speaking in tongues. They're rolling around on the floor. They're running. They're walking the pews. They're having the Holy Ghost time. And it ain't even church time yet. Amen. Right. Well, let me tell you, what is missing in them churches is worship. They're forgetting to worship God. They're just dying on a pew. Let me tell you, there's more than worshiping in a pew than worshiping in a pulpit. This comes from the heart. When you start worshiping from the heart, church, you'll start getting something from God. You'll start getting what you need. When you put all the world behind you and give it all to God, you'll get what you need. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Help us tonight, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we don't need to get caught up in these things, Brother Bob. Oh, God, help us worship oh. you, Lord. If I get caught up in that guitar too much, somebody oh, grabbed me by the ear and yanked me out of it. Oh, man. Oh, well, why do you say that? Because if I'm caught up in a guitar, how can I get caught up in worship? Come on. Oh, how can I get a hold of God? Right. Come on. Come on. How can I make heaven my home? You can if you're caught up in the world. If you're caught up in things of the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Well, if I make anybody mad and I went perfect at church. You're doing all right, brother. Go ahead. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I quoted a few. Oh, well, I quote one about this, but I said a few things about how the devil tries his brother Bobby and Brother Jimmy Hyde. He throws things at us. Amen. Come on. <laughs> But this is the best part of it, Brother Bobby. We can overcome it easy. We can overcome it. I said it a while ago. I know I did. I guess I'm getting ahead of my nose. But let me tell you, we can overcome these things by worship. We can overcome the thought that nobody cares. Nobody loves us. We can overcome these thoughts. That's right. Because let me tell you, Jesus Christ loved you, Brother Jimmy. Right. Right. Sister Maxwell, Jesus Christ loved you. Man. Somebody told me the other day, they said, well, when I first met you and you were starting to go to church, you were right here. And my, how you've grown. I told them, I said, well, you've got to understand. I went from being somebody that walked in and walked out. Somebody that went to the altar and carried it back out with me to somebody that walked in and left it, Brother Bobby. Somebody that decided to give what was in here up there because he gave it to me. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here today. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be able to preach this message to you. If it wasn't for God, Brother Bobby, who knows? So I've got to give him all the glory and all the praise. I've got to pour everything out to him, amen. Right. Hallelujah. We owe him these things. Yes. 
Psalms 29. Wood for fire says, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glorious strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. The glory due unto His name. It means that He, he earned it. He, it's due to Him. You have to give to Him. Well, you don't have to. You get a choice. But your choice determines where you go, Brother Bobby. All right. See, that's what some people don't understand. I don't want to get laughed at. I don't want to get made fun of for worshiping God or being a Christian. We don't understand. You, you're not understanding. Right. Something as easy as standing up in the middle of a crowd and saying, God, I love you. I don't know about everybody else, but I love you. I'm going to go all the way for you. Yeah. I started the race and I'm going to finish it. Something as easy as that will get you into heaven. Where yeah. you, you may say, well, it's easy to sit back. Yeah. It may be easy at first, but let me tell you, God's going to hit you like a ton of bricks with conviction. Come on. Right. Yeah, come on. You, you don't know. Yes, I do. I don't preach things that I don't know about, Brother Bobby. Unless God says preach it, it's all God. I don't preach it. I started out sitting on a pew not worshiping. I started out worshiping with God until I brought a buddy to church and the buddy wasn't in church. So I'd sit back with my arms crossed thinking I'm all cool, high and mighty and my buddy Come over on. here doing something like, yeah, let's go do it, man. Let's go ahead and skip church. Let's go out back and play basketball. No, church. Young people, if you ever thought about doing it now, get the devil out of your mind. Get him out of your heart. You don't need none of that. That's the devil telling you to quit listening to God. Amen. Right. That's right, brother. Come on now. That's it. Hallelujah. Forgive me if I hurt your feelings. I don't intend to hurt nobody's feelings. You're doing all right. Go ahead. Praise God. <clears throat> Worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. Bless him. I asked my wife, and I said, what do you think beauty of holiness is? She told me her idea, and I told her mine. I said to me, when I read beauty of holiness, I think about, well, we ask ourselves, what is holiness? Dress holiness. The beauty of holiness is when you give everything you have to God. Amen. Brother Tony said it before, he don't like wearing these suits. No times he wears them in church. But when he wears them, he's putting the beauty of holiness on. The best that he has is putting it on for God. Church, let's give it on for God tonight. By boarding you. Yeah. All right, go ahead. If I bore y'all, y'all start doing the cutthroat signal or something, I'll stop. <laughs> no, you go ahead. I'm, I'm almost done, y'all. Give me a few more seconds. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is powerful, Brother yes, Bobby. All right. We sing a song, there's power in the name of Jesus. Yes, amen. There's power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name we of begin Jesus. to to declare the name of Jesus over some things. We begin to walk and talk with Jesus. Let me tell you, that little still small voice, Brother Bobby, that talks to you is powerful. It may be small and still to you, but let me tell you, the heavens are shaking when he talks. Let me tell you, the angels are bowing down when Jesus says, hey, it's time to worship. Amen. There's something going on in heaven when God begins to talk. There's power in the voice of Jesus tonight. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Glory to your name. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Ye, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. Psalm, Psalms chapter 68 and 32 says, Sing unto God, ye kingdoms of the earth. O oh, sing praises unto the Lord's child. Salem. To him that rideth upon the heaven of, heavens of heavens, which were of old, lo, he does send out his voice, and that a mighty voice. Brother Bobby, church, when we worship God, when we pour out our hearts to him, when we begin to sing our praises to Him at home, at work, at school, in church, out of church, when we begin to dance, you have to dance as part of worshiping. It says it. Read it. It said David danced before the Lord with all his might. It's part of worshiping. When we begin to sing, we begin to dance, we begin to cry, we begin to pour all these things out, the voice of the Lord comes down. Amen. 
It's a mighty voice. The mighty voice comes down, Brother Bobby, and it comes down and it, it does a mighty work. When somebody comes to the front, Brother Tony, and we begin to pray for healing, when we all join together in one mind and one accord, we bind our faith together and we call upon healing, we call upon the Lord and His voice comes down, the healing power comes down. He comes down mighty. Right. Anybody notice what happened this morning? Oh, yeah. I watched Brother Robert walk up front. He had to use the pews and he, he was walking like this, you know, barely walking. We prayed for him and you could tell he was hurting. But let me tell you, when he walked back to his pews, he walked steady straight up. He didn't use no pew. He walked on his own. Well, what he's saying, I'm saying to the voice of the Lord, came down mighty tonight. He came down heavily. He came down powerfully and he healed him. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Do you believe it? Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Blessed Amen. be your name. I'll start. I guess I'll close by saying this. Musicians, y'all want to come on back. John verse 4, chapter 23. Or I'm sorry, chapter 23, verse chapter 4, verse 23. Get tongue tied up there. But the hour cometh and now. Is where the true worshippers shall worship. The Father is spirit and the truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Church, I've heard it said before. Here you know I believe it. When you read it, you study it, the times are coming. It's done, Brother Jimmy. It's almost over. Amen. God's getting ready to come. Come get a church that's made themselves ready for it. A church that's prepared themselves. Hey man, it's time for the true worshipers to arise. It's time for all the phonies and all the, the game players and the, the pew riding and the, the fence riders. It's time for all that to call it quits. It's time for the true worshipers to arise. God's ready for somebody to stand for His Word. God's ready to see somebody to reach out and touch Him one more time. We sing those songs that reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Hey man, church, you'll find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by, Brother Bobby, and He's listening. But the issue with it is, is that He's not hearing anything. Very little people are calling on God anymore. Very little people are pouring out their hearts, Sister Maxwell. They think that this new age worship will get them by. But let me tell you, if you don't do what God tells you to do, if you don't follow the rule book the way the rule book is written, if you try to change the rules, let me tell you, you're doing nothing but doing yourself. You're not getting nowhere. You're just you're throwing it all away. We've got to follow the book by its truth. We've got to begin to worship. When we worship, Brother Tony, church, when we worship, you'll come to life. You will see life like you've never seen it before. You will feel better. They say when you eat healthy and you, you do diets and whatnot, you'll feel better. You'll, you'll feel healthier. You'll feel more alert, more energetic. Church, I'm telling you, when you begin to worship God, you'll cannot, you cannot wait to do it again. You can't wait to lift your voice higher and higher every time. You won't be able to wait to get back to the house of God. You will feel energy. You will feel healing in your, in your body. You will feel deliverance or whatever. 